Okay, in this video, we are going to take a look at using audio effects such as reverb as insert effects placed directly onto an audio channel versus using them as send effects, which we would place over here on one of these return tracks off to the right in the session view or down here on the bottom in the arrangement view. Uh, and other DAWs tend to call this auxiliary effects or buses, similar concept here. Uh, let's start with placing an effect directly on an audio channel. So uh, working off of the Sonic Beginner Level 2 module that you comes in the download package, uh, I'm going to go to this kick clap track and just use my MIDI controller here to just trigger these different samples. And let's go ahead and go to our browser. We'll go to audio effects and we'll go ahead and grab just the default reverb effect and we're going to drag and drop it directly onto this audio channel with the kick and clap. So we can close the browser. And when we place this audio effect on, if I start to trigger these samples, you can hear the effect of this reverb. Now, reverb is an effect that simulates your sound being put in a space or a room or something like that. We'll go a little bit more in detail in it in the next video. But just for right now, understand that we're placing the reverb effect as an insert directly on this audio track and therefore it's only going to affect sounds that are playing back from this audio track. So if I play my kick and clap clip back, let's solo that track for a second. We can hear the effect of this reverb on it. Now, in order to hear the effect, you need to adjust the dry wet control over here. Now, we don't need to adjust it right now, but this setting needs to be set higher than zero. If it's at zero percent, we won't hear the reverb effect at all. In effect, all we're hearing right now is the dry or unaffected signal. If we start to turn the dry wet control up, we start to introduce the reverb effect. We call this the wet or the affected signal. And when the dry wet is anywhere in the middle, we're hearing a balance between these two signals, the dry unaffected and the wet affected signal. If I turn this up to 100%, we're left with only the reverb signal. We lose the dry completely. So we'll want to have this somewhere in the middle if we're using it as an insert effect. Somewhere around 50% tends to sound good. Now if I bring in the hats channel, let's solo this and play back this clip. You'll notice because the hats are on their own separate track, we don't hear the reverb, right? So when we place effects as inserts directly on an audio channel, it's only affecting what's on that audio channel. So let's go ahead and delete this reverb. And let's go over here, over here and look at the return tracks. Now, if you don't see these, you'll need to click this R button down here in the lower right hand corner. And uh, even if you're working off the default Ableton Live template, it gives you two return tracks already uh, with a reverb effect and a delay effect set up on them all ready to go. If you maybe deleted those and created your own template and you need to create a new one, you can simply go up to the edit menu, I'm sorry, to the create menu and we'll select insert return track from here and that will create a new return track it's right here it's labeled b return and it's empty i'm going to delete that for now because we're going to stick with the ones we have here okay so what are return tracks well return tracks are bas basically additional audio tracks but they can't play clips back from them so i couldn't take one of my audio clips and drag and drop it over onto the return track it doesn't let me it just kind of created a new track for me over here so let's undo that so we can't play clips back from, uh, from these return tracks. However, we can place effects on the return tracks. And then what we can do is we can use these send controls that show up on every track in our project over here. We can use those to send a copy of the signal. So let's say the kick and the clap, for example. We can send a copy of it over and pass it through the reverb effect here on return track A. Now, if you don't see these send controls, you'll need to click this S button down here over again in the lower right hand corner of the screen. If we're looking at the arrangement view, the send controls appear just below the volume control on any track. Right now they just say minus infinity for both send A and send B and I can turn them up from here. And the return tracks, as I mentioned earlier, they'll show up at the bottom of the arrangement view. And again, if you don't see those, just click this little R button down here in the corner. Okay, so let's go back over to the session view. And let's play these sounds back. And if I start to turn up the send level on the kick and clap track for send A, we're sending a copy of the kick and clap through this return track over here labeled A reverb. 
which has a reverb effect all set, ready to go on it. And so we start to hear these two signals now, the dry signal coming directly from the audio track over here. That's actually a MIDI track, but it's triggering audio samples. And then we hear the wet or the affected version over here on the return track. Now this brings up an important point. When you're using effects on return tracks, you should always have the dry wet control set to 100% wet. The reason for this is because we already have the dry signal over here. We don't need to hear another part of that or another copy of that. We just want to hear the affected signal coming through the return track. So we can get a blend between those two different signals. Now we can adjust how much of it we're hearing, again, by adjusting the send level, or the return tracks volume fader can be adjusted just like any of the audio tracks over here. Now, one of the benefits of using return tracks like this is that I could use the same reverb, for example, and I could start to take multiple elements in my song and send them through that same reverb. Now, as I mentioned earlier, reverb is an effect that puts sounds in a space. So this is a way that we can start to take all of our sonic elements in our track and put them in the same sonic space make them sound like they're playing in the same room or the same concert hall or what have you. Let's turn send A down. Let's solo just our kick and clap for a second here. Let's start to turn up send B. Now if we turn up send B, we're sending a copy of the signal over here through return track B. And you can see on return track B, we have a delay effect. Again, the dry wet set to 100%. And if we start to turn that up, we start to hear the effect of the delay playing in parallel to the dry signal over here on the kick and clap track. So maybe we'll send a few different elements through the delay. Let's keep the, uh, the kick and clap delay level relatively low. The hats might sound cool though. It gives us a nice little shuffle as those hats pass through the delay. It kind of adds to the rhythm a little bit. Cool. So again, that's the difference between using an audio effect as an insert, placing it directly on the audio channel, and using it as a send effect or a return effect over here on the return channels. In the next video, we'll take a deeper look at Ableton Live's stock reverb effect. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting, and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.